we'll start with a very quick review of gradient descent. In the regression class, uh, Emily went into quite a lot of detail explaining uh, the gradient descent algorithm, where it comes from, um, and the details. So I, I really recommend you go back to that if you want to kind of remind yourself of uh, where it all comes from. Uh, I'm just going to do a very, very, very quick review here so that the kind of we remember the fundamentals. You can think about the gradient ascent algorithm as a kind of a hill climbing algorithm. So if you look at the picture on the left here, the, if you only had one parameter w, you can imagine starting at some point, let's say wt in the tth iteration, and then moving a little bit uphill to the next parameter wt plus 1. And the amount you move from one to the other has to do with uh, this term over here, which is the derivative of our likelihood function with respect to the parameter w. And it's uh, computed at uh, the current parameter wt. Now, uh, remember, we have this little para extra coefficient parameter eta, which we call the step size. A little later in the module, we're going to discuss how that step size actually gets picked and uh, what effect it has. But imagine it's given, so you're going to move by eta times the step size, and so you move here, then you move a little bit, and you keep moving, 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 moving uphill, and eventually you get to the top of the hill, to the optimum, which maybe we're going to call W star for right now. And this is our goal, to get to that very, very top of the hill. Now that we've seen kind of hill climbing in the abstract way, getting to that top of the hill, so we step up until we hit the top here, which is W star, we can talk about when we know we're done in this iterative algorithm, when have we converged. So you might remember that at, at the optimum for convex functions, and what we're dealing with today is a convex function, uh, Emily talked quite a bit of detail what that means, uh, but just uh, in general, we'll have the, the derivative with respect to w of our likelihood is going to be equal to zero at the optimum here because kind of the, that curve flattens out. Now, if we could get to the point where the derivative is equal to zero, we'd be absolutely done. However, we're never going to get there exactly. So we're going to stop when the derivative is small enough. So we stop when the derivative with re, uh, respect to parameter w computed at our current parameter, wt. So we'll stop when the derivative is smaller than some tolerance parameter, epsilon. And, you know, set that to some small number, 0.001 or something. It depends on your problem. We'll, you'll explore this a little bit in your uh, homework. But we'll keep going. You won't get exactly to the top, but you're going to get pretty close to the top, and that would be your w hat. So we'll continue going up and up and up until our derivative is sufficiently small. Now, that was for a one-dimensional space, but we have now a larger dimensional space because we can have thousands of coefficients we're trying to fit. So instead of computing um, a one-dimensional derivative, we need what's called a gradient. And the gradient is just a stacking here of the derivative of L with respect to the first parameter, W0, the partial derivative of L with respect to the second parameter, W1, all the way to the derivative of L, the partial derivative, with respect to the last parameter, WD. And so this is a D plus one uh, dimensional vector for when you have D features. And in, uh, in our case here, if we start from uh, this point and the derivative is taking this way, the gradient is going to be something like uh, this may be. And that's what the gradient correspond to. And then we're just going to follow that gradient all the way to the top of the hill. In a little bit more detail, more pictorially, we're going to start from some point, and yeah, there are many heuristics for what to start, but let's say that we start over here, and we're just going to follow the gradient. And so on the right side, I'm, uh, I'm showing what are called the contour contour plots. And so uh, it corresponds to the level sets or the contours of this line. So if I start on the left side over here, it's kind of like starting over here. I take a gradient step and I can 
keep following it until I get to the optimum here, which is going to be our W star, and that corresponds to climbing this hill until I get to the top of the hill, which is going to be our W star. And again, Emily went to quite a bit of detail on contour plots and how they relate to that 3D plot. But that's our goal. So finally, this is a reminder, here's what the uh, gradient descent algorithm looks like. Uh, you start from some point, W0, and so uh, you might say the W is equal to zero, or random parameters, or something else. And you just keep following the gradient until the magnitude of the gradient is sufficiently small. So that's our algorithm that's going to take us to the optimum. And it's exemplified over here, and the eta here is our famous step size. Great. So now uh, we've done, we're done with our review of gradient ascent.